Hello once again everybody, I'm Jake Lucci and welcome to my video coaching newsletter. The title of today's video coaching newsletter is College Recruiting Reform. I have a college recruiting tip that I wrote and after I read it, we will talk a little bit about what I mean by college recruiting reform and how the whole system not only is changing but has changed over the past six to seven years and how college coaches are recruiting and how they're using the internet and social media to do so. The quote says, the social media college recruiting relationship is not often about what is talked about, but rather what is shown. Most prospects, parents, and college coaches fail to grasp the importance of utilizing social media as a tool to help them increase their chances of earning a college scholarship to a school of their choosing. For prospects and parents, proper utilization of social media tools can make all the difference in earning a scholarship worth hundreds of thousands of dollars or receiving no offers at all. The landscape of the social media college recruiting basis is constantly evolving and becoming larger. As technology continues to improve, access to players of all ages, professional and amateur, has become nearly transparent. It may seem a bit daunting to some, but it has now become the undeniable reality. There's a lack of transparency in the college recruiting process. I think we could all agree with that. And so I talked before about college recruiting justice on one of my other video coaching newsletters. And so college recruiting reform, they go hand in hand. It feels like we're in the upside down. It feels like as time continues on, we are more and more in situations that make us feel uncomfortable. And it's because what we're doing is we're waking up to the reforms that have happened in the college recruiting process right before our very eyes. Things that we didn't notice six or seven years ago, but now we notice now in the college recruiting space, it's vastly different. And it is benefiting the people that have told the truth and have done things the right way. It is hammering, hammering the people that have done it the wrong way and that have taken advantage of kids, that have taken advantage of parents. And the days of continuous college recruiting workshops and camps and showcases and club workouts where everyone has to pay all this extra money to be seen by college coaches, I think those days are numbered. I think college coaches, parents and prospects are wising up to the fact that Parents don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to help their son or daughter be seen by college coaches. They don't have to sell their soul to a club team. They don't have to sell their soul to a private school because they think that there's no way that they're gonna be able to play in college unless they spend all this money. There are benefits to private school and there are drawbacks. Kids tend to be on the whole, more depressed if they go to private school. And it's not because private school doesn't produce great athletes and have great people working. It's because there are a lot of people that go to these private schools and they forget about why they went in the first place. Why did you go to high school in the first place? To acclimate, to make friends, to make sure that you can be a normal in the world and not get into trouble to make sure that you can treat your teachers and your coaches with respect. And I think parents with money, especially when they go to these private schools, they listen to the superintendents of these private schools. They listen to all the high school coaches. And what happens is, is they monopolize the college recruiting industry because a lot of these private school coaches are tied in with a lot of these college coaches. Well, there are, hundreds, there are thousands of college coaches out there. And so when these relationships are formed, there are a lack of college coaches that are able to get in on that pool of prospects because the high school coaches are limiting the prospects opportunities because they have relationships with some of the college coaches. I think it's a travesty, honestly. I think that this is something that is being reformed and will be reformed is if there's a coach on the other side of the country that wants to recruit a prospect, that prospect should have the ability to listen to what that coach says. That prospect and that family should have the freedom to 
listen to what that coach says and not be blocked by their club coach simply because they're not friends with that coach on the other side of the country. I went to school outside of my home state of Texas and it was one of the best decisions I ever made. It, it got me out there. It got me in front of different people. It got me to the Midwest. It got me to the East Coast. It got me all these different places. To the, it got me all these different places to where I could interact and learn about other people. And so I think when we limit the opportunities for parents and kids to talk to multiple schools because ah, I got I to gotta end with this coach, you're, you're choking them from the other opportunities that they could get because you want to be the one that does it. And that's not what it's about. It's not about that. It, the, the reform part of it has to start with the youth and the youth have already done it. We have already done it. In the end, it says that the parents, the child will teach the parents. And that's what's going on right now. During this college recruiting reform process, people are searching for the truth. And in their search for the truth, they're starting to uncover some of that truth. And so when it comes to the college recruiting reform, what happens when we find the truth and what do we do? We get the bad people out and we keep the good people in. You have the bad coaches that are out that are taking advantage of kids. You get the same thing in politics. You get the bad people out and you get the good people in. And eventually we play that game in the long run, we have a chance to win. We have a chance to survive. We have a chance to make good on our college recruiting investments and not limit ourselves because we're a high school parent that wants to feel cool when the club coach talks to them about the four coaches that they know or the three coaches that they know. Y'all get twisted up on this as parents and then you're wondering why you don't have what you want. It's because you're, lim you're listening to someone that doesn't use the internet effectively for your child's college recruiting process. They don't go on social media and post about them because they, they're, they're too many kids, right? So then what do you have? You have Two little people with two little connections with college coaches trying to help thousands of kids. Then you have thousands of kids that don't get the help that they need. Then you have thousands of more angry parents. So what the people try to do is they try to hide the fact that this is what's actually going on by carroting you the whole time. Hey, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. And boom, your college recruiting process ends and you have nothing. Meanwhile, great college recruiting advisors like we have at LPG what we try to do is we're trying to push that narrative forward so the kid can actually just focus on playing their sport, posting every now and then on social media, and making sure that they stay up to date with the college coaches that they're talking to. What happens is, is we see an uptick, an uptick in what club coaches do, what high school coaches do, and everybody's like, well, that's amazing. I can't believe that this, that this child now has opportunities and that this family now has opportunities because they plugged, they invested in their college recruiting process. They plugged into somebody that's plugged into the grid, and all of a sudden, the college coaches start calling. The college coaches want prospects that are gonna make their program look better. What the college coaches are wising up to is certain club coaches and high school coaches that funnel prospects, that try to monopolize the college recruiting process. We see it, and it's not gonna work because these kids and these parents can't keep getting hurt because you wanna consolidate power. So the system adjusts itself, it course corrects itself. And so now here we are uncovering the truth and deciding what we need to do in the future. We have to just keep doing what we're doing. We have to lock arms. We have to move forward. And we have to make sure that people that are in positions of power, that we don't let them stay in positions of power simply because of what their title is. We have to decide, I'm going to let that person stay in a position of power because of my mindset or I'm not. I've got to change my mindset and change the normal thought processes of I am just subject to whatever my college co or my high school coaches and my club coaches say. At some point, you have to stand your ground. Once your ground is stood, then you move forward. You respectfully talk to the club coaches and respectfully talk to the high school coaches and you say, what can I do to better my process? Not everyone's gonna have access to a college recruiting advisor, but I assure you this, the prospects that have somebody in their ear helping them, not high school college recruiting advisors that work for some of these big companies on the internet, the guys that played one semester of, of baseball and didn't even finish out the first semester. Some people that, they try to give you college recruiting advice and you ask them where, where do they play? They didn't play class high school. And everybody knows I'm, I'm telling the truth about this because they've seen it time and time again. And if you really look in the mirror and if you really look, parents that have gone through the recruiting process, parents that are in the recruiting process and parents that are going through 
learn from the parents that have already gone through it and they're gonna attest this. They're gonna say, hey, look at this video, check this video out because he's telling the truth. That's what the college recruiting reform is, is all of us holding the people accountable, that consolidated power, so that way they can funnel money into certain programs based on the one, two, three, four, five, ten 10 relationships that they have while blocking opportunities that could otherwise help the child, that could otherwise help the family save money. And I think that we're now moving to a phase, we're now moving to a new age where all of the things that people did to trick kids throughout the college recruiting process when it comes to social media and the digital revolution of college recruiting, if you will, I think that all of that's gonna come back around. And so what do we do now? We keep moving forward, we lock arms and we, and we move forward. We, we hold the line and we move forward and eventually what'll happen, our collective consciousness about the college recruiting process will come together. More prospects will get seen. College coaches will be able to trust their sources on the internet and make sure that I'm recruiting from that place. I'm recruiting from this. I'm not recruiting based on stars. I'm recruiting based on what I see and based on what prospects have my attention. There's no better way than the internet and, and in-person visits than for college coaches to see and meet prospects to offer tangible college scholarship dollars and help that prospect earn a college scholarship by getting into their program and maybe even earning academic dollars as well. This has been College Recruiting Reform. I'm Jay Clucci, and until next time, I'll talk to you soon.